Sherry! What, Hush Puppy? Please tell me a story now. All right, Hush Puppy. The Lion and the Mouse. Let's tell a story, a story, a story. Let's tell a story that happened long ago. Let's tell a story, a tale of a lion and a mouse. It's a little story you should know. It begins once upon a time. A mouse was walking through the woods in the merry month of May when he happened to come upon a lion who was standing in his way. Roar! said the lion in a terrifying way. Roar! said the lion. I'll eat you up today. Then he pounced upon the little mouse and he opened up his jaws and was about to eat the little fellow when the mouse asked him to pause. He said... Give me a break, for goodness sake. What did I ever do to you? No one has to know. Won't you let me go? It's the nice thing to do. It's the nice thing to do. Besides, good sir, someday I might do you a favor, too. But the lion only laughed. <laughs> You're much too small. What could I ever expect of you? You're much too, much too, much too small to ever be of use to me. Oh, let me go, you never know just how tomorrow will end. And who can tell what use a little mouse could be to his friend? Well, the lion was so amused that he let the mouse go, and the little fellow scampered out of sight. And what do you know? But the day arrived when the mouse proved he was right. For the mighty lion was captured, and they tied him to a tree. And no matter how he twisted and turned, he just couldn't get himself free. When who should come along his way, but the mouse he'd freed another day. And before you could count from one to two, he sharpened his teeth and began to chew. Then one by one, neath those tiny teeth, the cords began to fray. And then suddenly, with a snap, they broke. And the lion got away. Which only proves that the smallest mouse can sometimes save the day. And from that day forth, the lion and the mouse were the closest of friends. They lived happily ever after, or so I'm told. And that's the way the story ends. Wonderful story. Yeah, yeah. Now tell us the point of it, Hush Puppy. And beautifully told by old Sherry. Thank you, Hush Puppy. But did you understand the story? Sherry, you tell nice stories. Nice. You know what I mean? N-I-Z-E. -E, nice. Did you get the moral, Hush Puppy? The moral, Hush Puppy? What was the moral of the lion and the mouse? Oh, Charlie Hulls, that moral is obliviously simple. So, so, what is it? Uh, well, the moral is, uh, without a doubt, and suddenly, without beating around the bush, I have no fear of saying that the moral is clearly and unquestionably, and not only do I think so, I am prepared to offer proof in any court of law in the country, and I rest my case. It is now up to the jury. What did he say? What? He said something. What, what did he say? He said he didn't get the moral of the story. Correct! And don't you forget it! 
My goodness, hush puppy. The moral of the story of the, of the lion and the mouse is very simply that no matter how little you are, you can still be a big help to a friend in need. You got it, Sherry. You, uh, I knew it all along. I just wanted to give you a chance to display your own intelligence. Thank you, hush puppy. Oh, it's nothing. And now this time, I'm going to tell you a story, and I want all three of you to put your heads together and see if the three of you can tell me the moral. That's a good idea, Sherry. I'm going to put my head together. <laughs> yes. What story is this, Sherry? How about the tortoise and the hare? Oh, yeah. Oh, the tortoise and his hare. Yes. Once upon a time, oh, once upon a time, the tortoise and the hare raced. Once upon a time, everyone was there, the dog and the bull and the bear. They all had come to see the tortoise race the boastful hare. The tortoise was surrounded by many friendly faces. Then all at once the bugle sounded. And they all took their places. Who should be the referee? None other than the horse. He walked up to the starting line and bellowed out the course. They'll run around the tree, they'll jump the rocks and swim the stream, then cross the field as fast as they can tear. Then down the road and round the bend and at the rock the race will end. The crowd will cheer the winner of the race between the tortoise and the hare. They're off! Bang! Went the starter's gun, swish! Went the hare, he was off in a wink of an eye. He ran round the tree and jumped the rock and was off across the field. And as he ran, he'd cry, I'm a hare, I'm a hare. Just for speed, there is no other to compare. Follow me if you dare, I'm faster than a sneeze. I can outrun any breeze, I please. Lighter than air. And while he was boasting, where was the tortoise? Where, oh, where was he? Why, he hadn't yet left the starting line as far as anyone could see. The one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet. How that tortoise would creep. So the hare, who felt he had the race won, lay down and went to sleep. And as he snoozed, the tortoise, who never ceased to try, plodded on until at last he passed the hare by. One foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, hey, now I'm doing fine. The one foot, two foot, three foot, Hey, look, I crossed the finish line. The animals all cheered him. They lifted the tortoise in the air. And all the cheering finally awoke the sleeping hare. Then with a sudden burst of speed, he crossed the finish line in style. But too late, too late, he'd lost by a mile. Yes, the hare was fast, but the hare lost face. He turned away, he was in disgrace. The story's old, but it proves the case. That slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> <laughs> 